For the past couple of years, I've been using AA rechargeable batteries in just about every electronic device that I own. There's some things I really like about them and some things I don't. However, AA rechargeable lithium batteries are now available. So the question is, are they just as good? And if so, which brand is the best? Well, I got a bunch of different brands to test today, and we're gonna do an update on the AA rechargeable batteries that we've been using for the last couple of years. So let's get the testing underway and see which brands are the best. In the first test, we'll see which brand has the highest milliamp hour capacity. Then we'll see which brand can power up a fan the longest and if any brand can beat the in-loop nickel metal hydride battery. Finally, we do some testing on some rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries that have been in use for nearly two years. At a price of $16.99 for four batteries or $4.25 each is this Smart Tools brand. Type-C port rechargeable, recharged by phone adapter. The Smart Tools brand is made in China. The Smart Tools comes with an adapter that can charge two batteries at once. 2,600 milliwatt hours. The battery can be charged 1,200 times. Flashing LED when charging, bright LED when fully charged. Recharging before use if standby over three months. Recharged by five volt USB adapter through type C cable. Okay, the batteries are charging. The Kirkland Alkaline battery only weighs 23.8 grams. The Interloop Nickel Metal Hydride battery weighs about two and a half grams more at 26.3 grams. The Smart Tools Lithium Rechargeable only weighs 18.6 grams, which is five grams less than the Alkaline and eight grams less than the Interloop. A lot of viewers have left comments mentioning that voltage is just too low on nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries. This Kirkland Alkaline battery is new and the voltage is at 1.59. So the fully charged nickel metal hydride battery is at 1.42 volts and the nominal voltage is 1.2. So this two-way radio is only showing two out of three bars on the Interloop, even though the rechargeable batteries are fully charged. With the Alkaline batteries, it's showing three bars. Lithium batteries operate at 1.5 volts. Let's see how they do. The lithium rechargeable is showing 1.52 volts. Okay, lithium rechargeables are showing three bars. A lot of viewers also mentioned that rechargeable batteries fit too tightly inside of electronic devices and sometimes it just won't work. Check out the width of this IKEA rechargeable. The Kirkland battery is quite a bit thinner at 14.03 millimeters. The Smart Tools battery is only 13.99 millimeters, so it shouldn't have a problem fitting inside of an electronic device. However, not all lithium batteries are the same. In our first test, let's measure the capacity of each battery. Unfortunately, a regular battery power tester analyzer just didn't provide accurate results, so I had to buy a new tester. I'll set the discharge rate to 250 milliamps to see how they perform under a moderate load. Each battery will have to be tested one at a time. With a 250 milliamp load, the voltage dropped to 1.34. We'll check back in about eight hours once the battery is fully discharged. Eight hours is up. The Smart Tools has an advertised capacity of 2,600 milliwatt hours or 1,733 milliamp hours. Its actual capacity is 1,470 milliamp hours. At $19.60 for four batteries, or $4.90 each, is this Opic Plus brand. 1.8 hour fast charge. Magnetic absorption. 1,000 cycles. 2,800 milliwatt hours. The batteries are made in China. To charge the batteries, you'll need to use the battery charger that comes with the batteries. Plug in the USB port to any charger, and insert the battery with a positive lead facing down. The Opic Plus is nearly a gram lighter than the Smart Tools at 17.7 .7 grams. Just like the Smart Tools, the Opic Plus has a 13.99 millimeter diameter. With a 250 milliamp load, the voltage dropped to 1.25. It's been about 12 hours and the test is finished. The Opic Plus is supposed to have a capacity of 2,800 milliwatt hours or 1,866 milliamp hours. Its actual capacity is 1,606 milliamp hours and takes away the lead from smart tools. At a price of $19.99 for four batteries or $5 each is this Ponergy brand. Five volt USB direct charging. Capacity 2,960 milliwatt hours. The Ponergy brand is made in China. With the the Ponergy brand, you can charge all four batteries at once. Solid red LED light indicates the battery is charging. The Ponergy is the heaviest lithium battery yet at 18.97 grams. The diameter of the Ponergy battery is 13.98. The 250 milliamp load caused the voltage to drop to 1.43, which is the best yet. And the Ponergy is supposed to produce 2,960 watt hours or 1,973 milliamp hours. And it actually produced 1,751 milliamp hours, taking the lead from Opic Plus. At a price of $21.99 for four batteries or five dollars and fifty cents each is this high trends brand lithium polymer 1200 milliamp hours low self discharge rated current output is one amp the sorbo brand is made in china the battery is supposed to weigh 14 grams. The blue flashing light indicates that the battery is charging. The diameter of the Sorbo is 14.03, the same as the Kirkland Alkaline battery. The Sorbo is by far the lightest battery yet at only 13.9 grams. The 250 milliamp load caused the voltage to drop to 1.4. It's rated for 1,200 milliamp hours and only produced 959. At a price of $23.99 for four batteries or $6 each is this Safe Loop brand. The battery uses lithium ion technology. Up to 1,000 charge cycles. 
uses a micro USB adapter for charging. The batteries come with protection circuit that allows for safe, stable, and long-lasting performance. The Safe Loop brand is made in China. All four batteries can be charged at once. 1,250 milliamp hour rating. Solid red light indicates that the battery is charging. The Safe Loop has the largest diameter yet at 14.39 millimeters. The Safe Loop is the second lightest yet at 16.2 grams. It experienced a pretty big voltage drop to 1.25 at the start of the test. The Safe Loop is supposed to have a capacity of 1,250 milliamp hours and it actually produced 1,103. Just like the Safe Loop brand, the Max Lithiums also cost $23.99 for four batteries or $6 each. Max continuous discharge, one amp. Energy, 2.8 watt hours, over 300 cycles. The Max Lithiums are made in China. The packaging indicates the maximum discharge is one amp. However, the battery indicates 800 milliamps. The Max Lithium is pretty light at only 17.4 grams. The diameter of the Max Lithium is 13.97. The Max Lithium did well at the start of the test with the voltage dropping only to 1.43. It's supposed to produce 2,800 milliwatt hours or 1,866 milliamp hours, but only made 1,500 93. At a price of $27.99 for four batteries, or $7 each, is this amp torrent brand. One giant leap for battery kind. Four lithium ion batteries, a charger, as well as a cable. The amp torrent brand has a 3,000 milliwatt hour rating. The amp torrent brand is made in China. The flashing lights indicate that the batteries are charging. The diameter is 14.19 millimeters. The amp torrent is the heaviest yet at 19.6 grams. The amp torrent did well at the start of the test with the voltage only dropping to 1.43. It has the most ambitious capacity claim of all the brands at 3,000 milliwatt hours or 2,000 milliamp hours. It actually came very close to meeting its milliamp hour rating at 1,988. Very impressive. Just like the Antorrent brand, the Maxwell brand also cost $27.99 for four batteries or $7 each. The Maxwell brand is rated for 2,600 watt hours. It can be charged and recharged 1,200 times. Type-C port rechargeable. The Maxwell brand is made in China. The Maxwell brand comes with an adapter that allows two batteries to be charged at once. The red flashing light indicates that the batteries are charging. The diameter is 13.98. The Maxwell weighs 18.3 grams. The Maxwell voltage dropped to 1.4 at the start of the test. It's supposed to produce 2,600 milliwatt hours or 1,733 milliamp hours. Unfortunately, it was almost 300 short at 1,436. At a price of $29.99 for four batteries or $7.50 each is this Blackoo brand. 1,000 cycles. The Blackoo brand is a lithium ion battery. 2,775 milliwatt hours, up to 2,000 milliamp output current. The Black Oob is made in China. With the Black Oob brand, up to four batteries can be charged at once. The solid red light indicates that the battery is charging. The diameter is 14.03. The Black Oob weighs just under 18 grams. The Black Oob's voltage dropped to 1.41 volts at the start of the test. It's supposed to produce 1,850 milliamp hours or 2,775 milliwatt hours. It actually did fairly well at 1,830 milliamp hours. At a price of $34.99 for four batteries or $8.75 each is this Tenovolts brand. 1,000 cycles, 2,775 milliwatt hours. The Tenovolts brand is made in China. The solid blue light indicates that the batteries are charging. The diameter is 13.99. The Tenovolt weighs 17.9 grams. The Tenovolts voltage dropped to 1.39 volts at the start of the test. It's supposed to produce 1,850 milliamp hours or 2,775 milliwatt hours. It came up a little bit short at 1,600. 692 milliamp hours. And the most expensive brand we'll be testing at $35.28 for four batteries or $8.82 each is this Vapcell brand. The Vapcell brand is rated for 1,800 milliamp hours or 2.7 watt hours. Battery with protection circuit in the anode. The Vapcell is made in China. The diameter is 14.24. The Vapcell is the heaviest yet at 19.4 grams. The Vapcell voltage dropped to 1.38 volts at the start of the test. The Vapcell is rated for 1,800 milliamp hours it actually exceeded its rating by almost 200 milliamp hours. Very impressive. All but one of the brands came up short of its advertised capacity with the VAP cell exceeding its rating. However, the amp torrent and the black oob came very close. Obviously, milliamp hour capacity is a very important factor when it comes to selecting a battery. The VAP cell came out on top at 1,999, amp torrent 1,988, black oob 1,830, ponergy 1,751, and tenovolts 1,692. Let's see how the lithium rechargeable batteries compare to the Inloop nickel metal hydride battery in a high drain application test. 
Once the test begins, I'll measure the RPM of each fan and then we'll see which brand offers the longest run time. I've arranged the fans from least expensive on the left to most expensive on the right. The inner loop is on the right by itself. Battery voltage has a huge impact on the RPM. As the voltage drops, so will the RPM. Most of the fans started off at nearly 3,500 RPM, but the Max Lithium is really struggling at only 3,100. Torbo is also struggling at only 3,250. The fan with the inner loop batteries is tied with Max Lithium as the slowest yet at only 3,100. And the Sorbo is the first to give up at only 102 minutes. The safe loop also gave up early at only 115 minutes. After two hours, the in loop is down from 3,100 RPM to only 3,000. The lithium fans are producing more work at around 3,500 RPM. And the Max Lithium is the third brand out of juice at 144 minutes. And the Tenna Volts is finished at 154 minutes. And the Black Goo brand is finished at 168. And the Maxwell is calling it quits at 172 minutes. So some of the less expensive brands are outperforming some of the more expensive brands. And the Ponergy is throwing in the towel at 179 minutes. And the second least expensive brand finally ran out of juice at 186. And the Amp Torrent is the next one to run out of legs at a very respectable 188 minutes. And it all comes down to the least expensive Smart Tools brand and the most expensive Vapcell brand. And the least expensive brand gave up at a very impressive 193 minutes. And the in loop fan is only spinning at 1,075 RPM. And the VAP cell is at 1,525, about 50% faster than the in loop. And the VAP cell has finally given up at a very impressive 233 minutes, 45 minutes longer than any of the other lithium brands. The in loop, which produces lower voltage and less RPM, has finally given up at 255 minutes, 23 minutes longer than the VAP cell. For the lithium batteries, the VAP cell came in on top at 233 minutes, Smart Tools 193, Amp Tort 188, Opic Plus 186, Ponergy 179, and Maxwell 172 minutes. It's hard to believe it's been two years since the testing began on the nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries. During that time, they've experienced over 700 days of outdoor use in solar rechargeable lights. So let's go ahead and remove the batteries and do some testing. To test the batteries, I'm using the Pyrex MHC9000 Wizard 1 Charger Analyzer. To ensure an accurate and fair test, the charger is first going to charge all the batteries, then it's going to allow the batteries to rest for one hour, then discharge the batteries. After it discharges the batteries, it'll let us know the total capacity in milliamp hours for each brand. The batteries will be charged at 500 milliamps and also discharged at 500. During each of the tests, the batteries will be discharged to approximately one volt. It's been right at 24 hours and the results are in. And the Rayovac battery, which has a 1,350 milliamp hour capacity, produced 1,116 milliamp hours, down 151 milliamp hours from a year ago. The Thunderbolt is supposed to produce 2,200 and only made 1,676, down 409 milliamp hours from a year ago. The Amazon Black is designed for 1,900 and made 1,117, down 162 milliamp hours from a year ago. Unfortunately, the analyzer is rejecting the Amazon Silver due to a high voltage condition, so the Amazon Black is no longer functioning properly. The Energizer is ready for 2,000 milliamp hours and did well at 1,858, down 61 from a year ago. The EBL is supposed to produce 2,800 and only made 2,331, down 61 from a year ago. The Panasonic Interloop, which is rated for 1,900, produced 1,848, only down 30 milliamp hours from a year ago. Very impressive. The IKEA Lada is rated for 2,450 milliamp hours and did very well at 2,356, only down 32 from a year ago. Duracell is also supposed to deliver 2,450 milliamp hours and actually did great at 2,423, down 65 from a year ago. The PowerX, which is rated for 2,600, delivered 2,394, down 32 from a year ago. The Varda and the Active Energy entered the longevity test a few months late. So after about a year and nine months, the Varda, which is rated for 2,600, produced 2,280, down 67 from a year ago. The Active Energy is supposed to produce 2,100 and only delivered 1,309, down 165 from a year ago. So after 700 days of use, the Duracell has the highest capacity at 2,423 million amp hours, PowerX 2,394, IKEA 2,356, EBL 2,331, Energizer 1,858, and Interloop 1,848. So which lithium rechargeable battery is best? The VAP cell seems the best, but it's also very expensive. For that reason, I would probably go with Smart Tools just to experiment to see if you like this style of battery. I'm really impressed though with the constant 1.5 volts. It seems like a great option for a rechargeable battery. All the videos on this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.